Nazi Germany. An SS doctor conducts a series of horrific human experiments. The Third Reich's attempt to build a biologically engineered master race. Now a writer believes he has uncovered evidence that the fertility experiments may not have ended, but secretly resumed 20 years later in South America. Join us as Explorer journeys into the land of the twins to solve a scientific mystery and find the truth behind the man known as the Angel of Death. A Tuesday afternoon in a small Brazilian farming town. Maria Eleni da Silva is taking her twin sons, Andre and Adrian, to have their picture taken. Across town, Adriana Pech is starting her shift at the town grocery. Just up the block in the hardware store works her twin brother, Adriano Pech. In the back of the store, two men are laying tile. Twin brothers, Delmar and Vilmar Labens. At the soda shop, Jean is playing pool with his brother, Giovann. Everywhere you look, there are twins. Seeing double is normal in Candido Godoy, Brazil. Among the 80 or so families living within a one and a half square mile area, there are 44 pairs of twins, a rate nearly a thousand percent above the global average. Why is the rate of twinning here so much higher? Why here, in this tiny town, deep in the Brazilian outback? For the mostly German community, it's a question that has hounded them for years. I think it's a sign from God that he has given us life in doubles, in pairs. It's a sign to treasure and respect life. Everyone wants an explanation for the phenomenon. There's even talk that aliens have something to do with it. Or that the twins are the result of a nuclear weapons test. But no one knows for sure. Five hundred miles south of Candido Godoy, a man is developing his own explanation. During the early 60s, something very curious happened at Candido Godoy. An explosion in the birth of twins. There is no reasonable, convincing explanation for what's happening. Recently, he thinks he's found an answer. A theory that could change everything. At the same moment when the twins appeared, and in the exact same place, there were sightings of Dr. Josef Mengele. He believes that the Nazi, Dr. Josef Mengele, perhaps World War II's most wanted war criminal, may be behind the phenomenon. If Jorge Camarasa can prove his theory, if Josef Mengele somehow succeeded in creating a town of twins, it could reshape our understanding of 20th century medicine, of the Nazis, and of a man many regard as one of the most evil to have walked the earth. Nineteen forty-three, Auschwitz. Mengele is the Nazi doctor responsible for determining the fate of those sent to the death camp.
400,000 people were sent to the gas chambers under his command. The man known as the Angel of Death has a singular obsession with twins. Gerald Posner is perhaps the world's preeminent authority on Josef Mengele. In the early 1980s, he spent four years preparing a legal case against those who helped him escape, amassing some 25,000 pages of documents, recording hundreds of hours of eyewitness testimony, and collecting rare artifacts of Mengele's life on the run. Much of what is known about Mengele today comes from his investigation. I think what is key in understanding Mengele and his work at Auschwitz is that he was a functionary. He worked within the Nazi system. He did it within the creation of the Third Reich and what they authorized. The Nazi empire was the perverse manifestation of a racist fantasy. Adolf Hitler was not just out to conquer the known world. His goal was to sterilize the populations he subjugated and to fill the void with a biologically engineered Aryan master race. The Nazis needed to find a way to increase the fertility of Aryan women to trigger them to give birth to an endless sea of blonde hair and blue eyes. For Mengele, the key to making this dream come true seems to be hidden in twins. There are certain indications of the experiments that Mengele was doing at Auschwitz that show that he was trying to unlock the secret of twins. Among those, he was doing transfusions, blood transfusions into pregnant women to see if in fact it would change the pregnancy, often killing the woman before the birth, then looking at the placenta and working on it. He often had women who became pregnant killed so that he could look at the, and work on the placenta on its own. And then he actually had instances in which twins were mated with each other to see if he might be able to create additional twin births from that forced coupling. The prisoners become an unlimited supply of experimental subjects. Fresh shipments arrive day and night. For Mengele, unlocking the riddles of reproduction is simply a matter of time. The only thing that could ruin that would be losing the war. But it wasn't a consideration for him. The Germans were going to win. The Reich was going to live for a thousand years, and he was going to be able to do this forever. By 1945, Germany is losing the war. Ten days before advancing Allied forces sweep through and liberate the camp, Mengele must abandon his laboratory at Auschwitz. Mengele, having spent a year and a half at Auschwitz, cannot leave that place without taking his medical research with him. According to eyewitnesses, he does, in fact, pack up enough documentation about his works, and some say he even took slides of laboratory experiments and some blood samples that he had and took them with him in a small doctor's case, and that was part of what he fled with. Mengele sheds his SS uniform and disappears into the chaos of post-war Germany. He dodges the Allies, and with a false passport, Mengele is shepherded south to Genoa, Italy. In 1949, he boards a freighter headed for South America. Mengele and his precious black bag are entering the new world.
Mengele llega al puerto de Buenos Aires. Mengele arrives in the port of Buenos Aires and finds that, for the first time in a long time, he can be free and can feel safe. Mengele finds a city he doesn't expect. A bustling modern metropolis filled with European expats. Buenos Aires, the Paris of South America. This is where the mystery begins. And divining truth from myth now becomes much harder. He blends in. Mengele's trail goes cold. Freedom for a hunted man. Jorge Camarasa believes he's picked up pieces of that long lost trail. I have been studying Mengele's life in exile. When I read news stories about Candido Godoy, about the twins, and I was able to connect the dots between Mengele's obsession with twins and the explosion of twin births in Candido Godoy. To prove his theory, Camarasa will need hard evidence. Evidence showing Mengele had the motive, method, and opportunity to successfully perform experiments on the people of Candido Godoy. Based on his hunch, Camarasa begins to dig. He soon discovers a trail of tantalizing clues that lead to the door of this man, Jacinto Zabolotsky a lawyer living a few miles outside Candido Godoy. Zabolotsky and a local doctor have spent years collecting historical information from the area. A treasure trove that paints an alluring picture. Many people from Germany lived here, people with connections with Nazism who didn't identify themselves. We have several interesting photos here. Here's a public school photograph from Gadido Godoy. The students are with the Brazilian flag and a Nazi swastika. The town's German heritage is intriguing. Could it be that Mengele felt at home here? Zabolotsky has more than just photos of local school children waving Nazi flags. Okay. Among the piles, there are hundreds of pages of notes. Whispered testimonies from the 1960s. According to Camarasa, these documents lead to yet deeper sources. I was able to interview some witnesses who still remember Mengele. They spoke with me of a German doctor's visit. Some people remember him with one name, others with a different name. They recognize his picture as soon as they see it. That's him, they say, when they see a photo of Mengele. The details are chilling. There was a doctor who wandered through the region, giving the ladies potions. There was also a person who used to buy blood. There was another who used to ride in a closed van. This laboratory had experiments, had syringes. This all happened during the 1960s, but unfortunately the people who are eyewitnesses have already died. According to Camarasa, it is among these stories that he finds a key link. I was told that they had collected testimonies from women who received care from Mengele. And they said that he had prescribed some pills. 
Mengele also had drawn blood from them. These reports, that was quite shocking. Because it was like watching Mengele working directly on women who later on gave birth to twins. Mengele, treating mothers. It is the cornerstone Camarasa has been hunting for. But for the twins in Candido Godoy, the suggestion that they are the product of an escaped war criminal's mad experiments is difficult to accept. It is disrespectful to suggest that we twins are the fruit of a supposed genetic manipulation by a Nazi executioner. Paolo Sautier, the town's historian, is himself a twin. Born in 1964, at the time Mengele was supposedly tinkering with the town's mothers. This phenomenon will continue to be a source of great apprehension for us until we discover the true reason behind it. For years, scientists have been at a loss for an explanation. But now a team from a university in Porto Alegre, Brazil, is about to launch a new investigation. If they can find an answer, it may at long last solve the mystery looming over the town. Is there a scientific explanation? Or was it Mengele, after all? Did an escaped Nazi war criminal come to an isolated Brazilian town in the 1960s and resume his experiments to build Hitler's master race? For the scientists trying to find answers, the nearly 500-mile journey into the land of the twins takes nearly nine hours. And for lead researcher, Dr. Lavinia Schuler Faccini, following in the footsteps of Mengele's ghost is daunting. Just imagine, this community believes it was treated as an object of experiment by Mengele. Imagine now, after 30, 40 years, scientists appear again, all dressed up in white lab coats, treating them as research subjects. That's an image we want to avoid. If they can provide answers, it will bring an end to the plague of speculation that nags on the village. With a new day, the investigation begins. On the outskirts of the village, Miro Grimm runs a cow and pig farm. By his count, in his family, there are some 15 pairs of twins. He is himself the father of a pair of 17-year-old twin boys, Derli and Julesy. The brothers, Grimm. The Grimm family has its own explanation for what is behind the boom of twins here, one that doesn't include Mengele. The story about Josef Mengele, for me, I mean for our family, we have discussed this many times. But we think that it could be the water from these two springs, but we don't know for sure. Could it be that the water from the wells might be responsible? It's a legend that many in the town who want to discredit the Mengele theory support. Marcelo Zagonel de Oliveira, a geologist from the science team, has come to take a look. And with Grimm's permission, collect a sample. The spring that Grimm believes is responsible for the phenomenon bubbles out of the ground a half mile up the hill behind his house, past the swine wallow and the duck pond. Yeah. 
Groundwater is more than just simple H2O. It is full of minerals and chemicals from the surrounding environment. If there's some unusual substance in the water that could have an impact on reproduction, it should show up in the sample. For the locals, this was once the primary drinking water. To get an accurate measure of what is in the water, the container must be rushed to a lab within 36 hours. Some of these organic compounds and minerals can degrade rapidly. For a seasoned scientist, this investigation has its oddities. According to Grimm, it's not just the people here that are popping out twins. There are stories of twin ears of corn and twin cows, even a story of a calf with two heads. The results from the previous day's well sample have come back. The water is negative for anything unusual. Science has no explanation for the phenomenon. And for those who believe Mengele is behind the explosion of twins, it heightens the mystery. At the very least, this is curious and alarming. There is no reasonable scientific explanation about what's happening in Candido Godoy. Scientists from all over the world have tried, and they haven't been able to come up with an explanation. Camarasa is convinced he's found further evidence that could explain the strange occurrences of twinning in the cows of Candido Godoy. He has uncovered rumors that on his travels around the continent, Mengele posed as a vet. There were farmers who spoke of being at meetings with Mengele, in which he tried to persuade them that he was able to improve their cattle. He prescribed some kind of product, a medication. Mengele promised the farmers that he could make their cattle produce twins. What could be injected into a cow to potentially induce twins? About the only thing that was available in the 1950s they could have increased the twinning rate among cattle would have been growth hormone. Dr. Gary Steinman is a leading researcher on twinning. Even today, definitive proof of the exact mechanism that triggers twins remains unknown. But Dr. Steinman has made observations that may be unlocking a piece of the puzzle. He has shown that cattle injected with growth hormone have a significantly higher rate of twinning than hormone-free cattle. Growth hormone stimulates the production of a protein called IGF, and high IGF levels correlate with twinning in both cattle and humans. Could this be the answer? Did Mengele discover the growth hormone twinning connection some 50 years earlier? The idea that Mengele is behind the large number of twins is so far based only on stories from questionable sources that are no longer alive. In fact, Mengele's life after the war is full of strange tales. By some accounts, he ends up living deep in the jungle with indigenous people. Others say he does research for the CIA. The stories from Candido Godoy may be no different. What's more, in the 1950s, he is still some 500 miles away in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And exactly what Mengele does here from 1949 
1959 remains a mystery for decades. In 1984, attorney Gerald Posner travels to Argentina to hunt for clues. There had been rumors for years that Argentina had a large Mengele file. Simon Wiesenthal, the Nazi hunter from Vienna, had asked for it. The British government had asked for it, had been rejected. The Israelis had asked for it and been rejected. For weeks, Posner continues his attempts. Then late one night, he gets an unexpected knock on the door. He has just minutes to gather his belongings. I was taken to the downtown police station when a federal police colonel across the desk, very unhappy to be there, told me that I could have access to a file. Inside a room that I was taken to was a treasure trove of information filling in 10 years of Joseph Mengele's life. Mengele's application to the country, his immigration documents, his bank accounts, mortgages, telephone and address listings, his business dealings. All of it is under his own name. The Argentinian authorities seemingly monitored Mengele, but did not arrest him. Mengele had a free window. 1949, when he finds freedom arriving in Buenos Aires, until 1959, Joseph Mengele can do anything he wants. He can even take that black bag that he took from Auschwitz and start experimenting again on people. As Posner investigates the Argentine files, there is one that stands out. In the mid-50s, Mengele starts a firm, Fadro Farm. And according to Argentine law, when you start a company, you have to give a listing of what its purposes are. You have to have filings for it. And the filings and everything show that what it was was a pharmaceutical company. According to Posner, the company imported veterinary medication and later expanded into dealing in pharmaceuticals for humans. It's a set of facts that feed speculation. Mengele is seemingly re-entering the medical sphere and potentially one step closer to being able to relaunch his experiments. The tales linking Josef Mengele to the Brazilian town of Candido Godoy are attempting to take root in hard evidence. But are they fact or fiction? Local historian Jacinto Zabolotsky says he has proof of a direct connection between Mengele's pharmaceutical company and the town. Oh, seu Leonardo. Boa tarde. Como é que vai, senhor? Tudo bom? Beleza, pura. Over 45 years ago, farmer Leonardo Bonflor met a mysterious German man. I want to show you the book to see if you remember him. Yeah. The one in the military uniform? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The person who came here resembled this one, more or less. Uh -huh. He was neither fat nor thin. Uh -huh. The next day he was gone, but we paid a high price to have him treat our cows. Afterwards, we took the medicines to the pharmacy in town and asked them, what kind of medication is this? A living eyewitness who positively identifies the mysterious figure as Josef Mengele. Perhaps he did come here in the 1960s after all. And if that is true, are the tales of Mengele treating the local women, the stories of injections that triggered twins, true as well? Although a motive and a potential method for Mengele to trigger the twins have both seemingly been identified, there's one remaining question. Why come here, to this rural outpost in Brazil, over 500 miles away from his comfortable life in Buenos Aires, Argentina? May 1960. 
In a bold operation, the Israeli Mossad grabs one of the most infamous Nazi war criminals off the streets of Buenos Aires. Adolf Eichmann, the man who engineered the Third Reich's extermination of millions. The Nazi circles in Buenos Aires were in panic. They did not feel safe anymore. Many Nazis disappeared. Mengele took off. For Camarasa, it sets the wheels in motion. With the relentless Mossad on Mengele's tail, no place is safe. He must avoid major cities. Once more, he disappears. Camarasa believes that by the mid-1960s, Mengele's route takes him to Candido Godoy. After Eichmann was captured, Mengele fled to Paraguay, where he had friends. He soon ends up on a farm, a bit further south. From there, it's just over 40 miles to Candido Godoy, where he shows up as a traveling doctor. This region was virtually without borders, where he could move freely, where he was safe and protected. Camarasa believes his picture is complete. Mengele enters Candido Godoy, and the mothers of the town bear twins. But is it really possible Mengele's hideous experiments at Auschwitz bore fruit? That he somehow cracked the code of twinning and exercised it in a remote little town? All the evidence is circumstantial. And woven into a convincing tale, it has spread like wildfire through the global press. But is it true? Did the infamous Nazi war criminal, Dr. Josef Mengele, come to a small Brazilian town in the 1960s and resume his efforts to trigger Aryan twins. There is one man who may be able to help solve the mystery. Israeli Mossad agent Rafi Eitan, the man who successfully captured and abducted Adolf Eichmann. Eitan is a legendary spy. In the 1960s, he led a team of agents that trailed Mengele across South America. The second kidnapping target after Eichmann is Mengele. It was written in the newspapers. In 1961, they almost capture him. At this time, he lives in Sao Paulo, in the surrounding of Sao Paulo. Yet before they can mount an operation to abduct him, other intelligence priorities emerge, and the Mossad is forced to drop the case. Nevertheless, the new position places him some 600 miles northeast of Candido Godoy. During the time that Camarasa claims, Mengele was in the town of Twins. Here we have Sao Paulo, and here we have, how, how, how you call the city? Candido Godoy. So you could uh, ask yourself how you go from Sao Paulo to Candido Godoy. Have you traveled in these roads in 1962? I did. <laughs> I did. I don't believe when I look at the map from uh, Sao Paulo to this area, okay? I don't believe. It's unthinkable. For a wanted man as notorious as Mengele, travel to Candido Godoy would have been extremely difficult. Would his passion for research have been so strong it drove him out of hiding, to risk capture 
and commute for days across treacherous roads. In Candido Godoy, modern scientists have come to the town. Their investigation may be able to shed light on what Mengele did or didn't do here. The hunt for clues has brought lead researcher Dr. Schuler Faccini to the parish church. The baptism records of the town should contain almost every birth, every case of twins, and be able to show exactly when the supposed explosion of the twins took place. I have just found a pair of twins that were born three years ago. She's uncovering countless cases throughout the records. When you look at the birth records here, you see that twinning has continued at a high rate. A phenomenon like this can often drop off or fluctuate, but the rate of twins here has been unchanged across time. It's a pattern which eliminates the possibility that Mengele may have used growth hormone to trigger the event. A hormone injection would have had only a one-time effect, altering just that one pregnancy, but not future pregnancies or future generations of women. Mengele is starting to fade from the pictures in Candido Godoy, artificially triggering twins across multiple generations is scientifically impossible. There must be another explanation. And to find it, scientists must dig deeper. As strange as it may sound, the dead can give remarkable testimony. Among the markers are dates, names, facts and figures long forgotten by the living. And it is here that the truth may lie entombed. Dr. Ursula Mate and Dr. Schuler Faccini are leaving no stone unturned as they hunt for the answer to the riddle of the twins. The German pioneers who founded this town at the turn of the 20th century are buried in this little plot of ground. Although today there are some 80 families, the names on the stone seem to indicate the town was founded by just eight families. For a geneticist like Dr. Mate, it's a big clue. Genetics is a complex science, but sometimes the explanations can be simple. Take a bag of candy, for example. Inside are all the colors of the rainbow. Yet when you take a handful out of the bag, you don't often get all the colors. In fact, sometimes you get much more of one color and almost none of the others. The same thing can happen with genes and small, isolated populations. If just a few families settle an isolated place, Future generations develop only from that limited set of genes. Genes that could be quite rare in the world beyond suddenly become common in the isolated gene pool. It's what geneticists call a founder effect. This town may be the perfect place for these researchers to uncover what has long eluded science finding the genetic factors that trigger twins. First, they must build a massive family tree for the twins and show that twinning here follows a clear hereditary pattern. But to hunt down a possible genetic mutation, they must collect biological samples, swabs of saliva, and blood samples from every mother who's given birth to twins. The secret to the twins could be hidden in a single drop.
In the lab, they extract the DNA. But the human genome is complex, made up of some 30,000 individual genes. And the twinning factor could be hidden inside any one of them. One scientist believes he knows where to look. Twinning expert, Dr. Gary Steinman. The blood from the mothers has been sent to him for analysis. Once again, for him, it all comes down to IGF, the hormone he has correlated to high rates of fraternal twinning. IGF doesn't just come from growth hormone injections. The body can produce it naturally. If the IGF levels are higher than normal, it could point the finger at the genetic factor responsible for hereditary twinning. If in the samples that we are studying from that population, we find an exceptionally high IGF level, the next thing would be to look for a mutation of the IGF gene, that the mutation is the thing that is responsible for the elevated twinning rate. But as the investigation continues, nagging questions still remain. Was Mengele aware of the twins in Candido Godoy? Did he, like the modern scientists, attempt to study their blood for answers? The final chapter of the Mengele story is locked behind these doors on a secure military base in Brazil's capital. the archives of the federal police. These cabinets are home to the reality of Mengele's life. Artifacts recovered after his death near Sao Paulo. His false identification papers. His pen. A compass his precious briefcase, filled not with samples, but with the detritus of a man on the run. Mengele's wristwatch, some 30 years after his death, it still ticks. But there are even more valuable relics here. These are the handwritten letters and journals of Josef Mengele himself. Journals of his life in hiding. If Mengele's sense of narcissism, if his ego, if his passion for his science and genetics was so great that he would take the risk after the war to return to it, he would have also had the same passion, zeal, and courage to have written about it. It would have served no purpose in his ego to have returned to the science without documenting it. The letters contain no mention of Candido Godoy, no mention of having cracked the riddle of twinning, no mention of having done any science while on the run in South America. Instead, they are the ramblings of a depressed, lonely man. I can say no with absolute certainty. There was no time after the war when Mengele, even if he had the desire, ever returned to any science. The two families that hid Mengele from 1961 to his death in 1979 declined to appear on camera. They have, however, confirmed that Mengele never traveled to Candido Godoy and that he never resumed his experiments. Mengele died ignorant of the answer to the riddle that so haunted him. But that puzzle may soon be unlocked. At the lab in Porto Alegre, Brazil, geneticist Dr. Mate and her team have built a massive digital family tree of the twin population in Candido Godoy. There are cases of twins here going back to the beginning of the 20th century and genealogical data indicates that many of the twins do in fact share a common ancestor. As the DNA analysis continues, the team believes a founder effect is most likely the cause. 
If Dr. Steinman's data suggests that twinning is related to the IGF gene, science may be on the doorstep of a fundamental breakthrough in understanding the genetic factors that contribute to hereditary twinning. But while the work to find the exact gene responsible continues, the results are clear. Mengele had nothing to do with the twins of Candido Godoy. The answer to the mystery will be found in hard science and not in speculation.